Howdy everyone. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how I add weight to my fishing lures, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. I get a lot of questions about my lead weights, so today I want to show you my process. Let's start with my drill bits. Uh, I like to use Forstner bits because they make a clean hole with a flat bottom and for lure making I mostly use these four smaller ones. The first thing we need to do is make some lead weights to match these common diameters. I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood. Uh, it really doesn't matter what kind of wood it is, in this case it's pine. I'm going to take each of these bits and drill several holes, uh, being very careful not to go all the way through. While we're waiting for this thing to heat up, I wanted to kind of go over the equipment that I use. This is a Lee Precision lead pot. Uh, they make a few models. I've got a link to this on my website. If you follow the link in the description, it'll take you there and you can find most of the products that I use. But a couple of things about working with lead that you need to keep in mind is that obviously it's very hot so you can burn yourself. You want to take precautions and be very careful. Uh, I don't ever let my hand get underneath the spout on this one. I always try to maintain a pretty good amount of space between me and the hot lead, just in case it splashes or anything like that. Obviously, lead is poisonous, so you don't want to ingest it in any way. And it's probably a good idea to have some good ventilation whenever you're using it. Particularly when you um, are putting lead in the lure, it'll smoke up a little bit. And so whenever I'm in doubt, I wear a respirator. You'll see that there's uh, adjustable heat on this unit. You're probably gonna to wanna to fine tune that for yourself, but I noticed that when I have it up higher, uh, it can cause the wood to burst into flames when I put lead into it. So I've turned it down enough to where it still gets hot and it still melts the lead, but it doesn't flare up on me like that. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of lead into each one of these little pockets, and I'm gonna to try to put different amounts in each one so that I have a good variety of weights to choose from. Now that these are nice and cool, we're going to knock all of these out of their little holes. Um, I will say that this first batch is probably going to be pretty tough to get out of there, but the more you use this board, the more it kind of burns out those holes and the easier they fall out of there. You can see how that's kind of smoothed the inside surface a little bit. So we're going to pour a few more of these and uh, see if we can't get us a nice little pile of them to use as we go. If you want to support the channel and look good doing it, you can now get your official Zimtex merchandise. Just click on the store tab or the link to my website in the video description. There you can find everything Zimtex, including gear, links to the products I use, and other cool stuff. So your wood needs to be sealed because you're going to be putting this lure in the water to ballast it. I also like to have my hardware installed uh, either permanently or temporarily and I'll uh, also hang the hooks with the split rings on them so that I can get the proper weight distribution. Now to start off with, you're going to take an educated guess on what weight, size, and placement you're going to use on this lure. And I uh, use hot glue to temporarily hold the weights in place. This is a trial and error process, but the great thing about it is that you can remove and relocate the weight easily without damaging the lure. Different lures require different ballasting, and it really boils down to what you're wanting your lure to do. You might want a floating bait, you might want a fast sinking bait, or a slow sinking bait. A lot of poppers and walk the dog type lures sit tail down in the water. So I'm not gonna get into ballasting of every single type of lure that there are. 
You can look at my other videos on specific lures to see how I weight them, but this process allows you to fine tune your lure for whatever buoyancy you're trying to achieve. A couple of other variables for you to keep in mind are foil and clear coat considerations. You know, as you add foil and clear coat to this lure uh, after we've already done our ballasting, it's going to affect the way it either floats or sinks a little bit. Another thing to consider is salt water versus fresh water. Because salt water is uh, a little bit more dense, it gives your lure a little bit more buoyancy. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as covering the holes, I also have tried a couple of different methods. Uh, probably the most prevalent one that I use is Instacure and baking soda. However, uh, I've also used some Bondo, um, which is probably a little bit safer to use um, and sets up pretty quickly. So you might see me using that a little bit more often uh, moving forward. Now, whichever of these methods you use, you're definitely going to want to wear a mask when you sand them down smooth. Now, if you happen to be working with resin lures, this method can work pretty much the same way. Because you don't need to waterproof your resin, you can start by just hot gluing the lead weights on the bottom to figure out where you need your placement, and then you can drill the holes. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that you don't want to put any hot lead in your resin uh, as it will cause the resin to melt and it will also put some pretty bad fumes in the air that you don't want to breathe in. However, you can glue those lead weights in, inside the holes and then cover them just like you did with the wooden lures. Another great possibility with resin lures is that you can actually cast the hardware and the weight in place. Uh, when you do your pour. And that can be done a couple of different ways. One method is to pour some BBs into the bottom of your mold. Another method is to pinch some split shot uh, lead weight on the through wire. Either way, this requires some trial and error, but once you get it right, there's no need to cover any holes and you can actually crank out quite a few lures in a short period of time once you figure out the weight. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.